Welcome to the Deliberation and Voting Procedures, an overview provided by the New York State Justice Center for the Protection of People with Special Needs Surrogate Decision Making Committee, or SDMC. During this presentation, I will provide the procedures for the volunteer panel members' deliberation, which is a discussion that only involved the four volunteer panel members. I will also discuss voting and potential hearing outcomes. The first section will provide an overview of deliberation and voting procedures. Only the four volunteer panel members, which include a New York State licensed medical professional, an attorney, an advocate, and a family member, or individual with a disability, may participate in the deliberation of capacity, surrogacy, and then best interest. During the deliberation, the volunteer panel members have the sole discretion as to how much weight to give any specific evidence presented. Witness credibility is also their purview. Deliberation is private and is conducted off the record. During the panel deliberation, the recording of the hearing is paused. While this discussion is occurring, the recording of the hearing is paused and at this time, any objections by Mental Hygiene Legal Services or MHLS may be considered. Volunteer panel members may not provide information from their own knowledge or experience during the hearing. This would be considered testimony. However, this is acceptable during deliberation. Volunteer panel members are allowed to share their own opinions, impressions, and knowledge with regard to the three decisions during deliberation. If they need additional information in order to make the decision, the hearing may be reopened for additional testimony from the providers or the physician. The volunteer panel members must address the three questions in this order. Does the individual have capacity? Does the individual have a willing and available surrogate? And is the procedure in the individual's best interest? SDMC requires three votes to take away capacity, three votes to agree that there is not a willing and available surrogate, and three votes to agree that the procedure is in the person's best interest. For more information about these three decisions, please review Module 2. As previously stated, SDMC requires three votes to take away capacity, three votes to agree that there is not a willing and available surrogate, and three votes to agree that the procedure is in the person's best interest. In order to conduct a hearing, at least three volunteer panel members must be present. If there are only three volunteer panel members rather than four, voting must be unanimous. Operating with only three volunteer panel members may result in an unnecessary delay of medical care for the patient if the panel is not able to make a decision or must cancel the hearing. SDMC works diligently to prevent this from happening. Hearings must also begin promptly, as delays can impact other hearings as well. There are often other cases scheduled back to back at the hearing. If one is delayed, the others that follow will be delayed. It can be very stressful for some individuals to wait, especially in unfamiliar settings. So please arrive on time for your scheduled hearing. There are several potential SDMC hearing outcomes. Potential hearing outcomes include consent for the procedure is issued, denied, or there is no decision issued when the vote is split two to two. SDMC works diligently with the provider when the declaration is processed. The SDMC office ensures all information is included in the declaration before moving the case forward to the panel for a hearing. In most hearings, the panel grants consent for the procedure. Consent is issued if at least three volunteer panel members agree that the patient lacks the capacity to make the decision, there is no legally authorized, willing, and available surrogate, and the procedure is in the patient's best interest. Consent is denied if three volunteer panel members agree that the patient lacks capacity and does not have a surrogate, however, that they agree that the procedure is not in the patient's best interest. Three votes that the procedure is not in the patient's best interest are required to deny the procedure. A specific denial of consent is issued to the provider. However, they may resubmit a case with new or additional information to SDMC for a new hearing. If there is no decision or a split vote, two to two on the best interest decision, this is called no decision. There is no consent granted and no denial issued. In these cases, SDMC would reach out to the provider to determine whether they are able to provide additional supporting documentation for the procedure or request that the medical provider participate in a new hearing. Additional hearing outcomes can include the panel may determine that the person has the capacity to make the decision. In this case, the voting ends with capacity. A specific written determination is issued to the provider stating that this individual has been determined to have the capacity to provide his or her own consent. 
The panel may also determine that the person lacks capacity to make the decision, but does have a surrogate. This could happen if a surrogate responded to the notice of hearing and appeared at the hearing to express their intent to make the decision. A specific written determination is issued at this time, which identifies the surrogate by name and acknowledges the surrogate's legal authority to make the decision. The panel may not be able to reach a decision without specific information. A conference call will be scheduled when volunteer panel members have additional questions, need additional information, clarification, or a second opinion on the procedure is needed in order to make a decision. The hearing will end and volunteer panel members will reconvene by a conference call at a later date when the new information is obtained. Conference calls are sometimes necessary when additional information is requested at a hearing in order for the volunteer panel members to make a decision. However, any hearing may potentially be reopened as a conference call when there is a request to approve an extension of time on the consent or when a physician wants informed consent for a related procedure or diagnostic evaluation. Volunteer panel members may be contacted sometime after the hearing for a conference call in these circumstances. Approximately 8% of SDMC cases are reopened as conference calls. SDMC will provide information as to the reasons for the conference call and detailed instructions for accessing the meeting by phone. The same volunteer panel members from the original hearing are asked to participate in the conference call. Additional case information or new information will be sent by mail, fax, or encrypted email for volunteer panel members to review, as well as the conference call telephone number and conference code. As with the in-person hearings, it is very important to call in at the agreed upon time. Please call SDMC right away if you need assistance opening the documents or connecting to the call. If you have any questions about the SDMC process, please call 518-549-0328 or email sdmc at justicecenter.ny.gov. The Justice Center maintains a distinct toll-free information referral or INR line, which is 1-800-624-4143, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Staff responds to calls and email inquiries regarding disability issues, including disability rights, legal assistance, housing, employment, assistive technology or AT, healthcare, and any other disability-related questions. Specifically, staff connects individuals with information, provides technical assistance and or referrals to programs or services, and solves problems for individuals with disabilities, parents and guardians, advocates, employers, and providers. For more information about the Justice Center, please visit the website at www.justicecenter.ny.gov.